Facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of the City of Highland Park. Hello and welcome to Carmen's Current Event Roundtable. Uh, we have a few announcements that we want to make before the show starts and that is to thank my sponsor, the Bluegrass Restaurant, for their amazing food, terrific service, and that we enjoy before our show, my mm -hmm. guests. And also, I want to thank my director, Larry Beyer, who always does a terrific job, and my wonderful crew today, Ron, Julian, Pam, and Irv. And I want to welcome back one of my favorite guests um, that we've had several times. Uh, he's my political expert, author, and lecturer, Joe Kopsik. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes. Enjoy, I always enjoy your topics, and today our topic is on conspiracy theories. And before I ask you what is a conspiracy theory, um, I just want to read some of the latest things that we're going to attack today from the news. And, and also, I want to, Joe has had this before, how many weeks before, or a couple of months before, or even years before. Almost two years. Oh, wow, that he came out with this. But one of the things I want to talk about today is the president claimed what Joe Biden did was wrong. He said Hunter Biden took money from Ukraine as well as from China. Biden, during the Obama administration, pressured Ukraine to fire the Ukrainian general prosecutor and we're going to talk about that and why he wanted him to do that. And now Trump is under repeatedly pressing Ukraine's president. He was pressing him to investigate Joe and Hunter Biden. And now he's getting a lot of flack for that, um, which he's had a lot of investigations on his own. But now they're coming after him for this which I really don't understand. And maybe you could explain to our viewers why are they pressuring, uh, and now they want to, um, they're really upset with uh, President Trump, and you know they're gonna do all kinds of things you know, because of that. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what's going on, and maybe to the viewers express why this is, you know, the uh, the uh, conspiracy theory and why the president got in a little bit of trouble because he talked to uh, the president of, of the Ukraine about uh, Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. Yeah, so Volodymyr Zelensky became the president of Ukraine earlier this year, I think it was around May, and there was a Trump-Zelensky phone call from, I think it was July, and uh, allegedly Trump urged that president several times to um, to investigate you know, Hunter, uh, Hunter Biden's uh, dealings with uh, Burisma, which is the largest energy company in the Ukraine. The full name is Burisma Holdings Limited, um, or LTD. It was founded in 2002 um, by Mikola Zlochevsky, uh, who was an ecology and natural, natural resources minister under Yanukovych, who was in and out of power in the Ukraine between 2002 and 2014. And um, what the Bidens were doing, uh, at Burisma and in regards to political and business ties with Ukraine is really important, especially considering that Burisma is the largest energy company in the Ukraine. Um, Ukraine doesn't have a lot of oil by itself, but it transports a lot of oil across it. And its relationship between international oil markets and the EU and NATO and Russia is of extreme importance to uh, a lot of um, Americans okay. and people worldwide. Joe, why don't you uh, let us know, first of all, what is Burisma? I know you mentioned that a few times, and I see that you do have a chart over there. And what exactly is Burisma? Yeah, so it's Burisma Holdings uh, LTD. It was founded by, by Mikola Zlochevsky, who, as I said, was the Ecology and Natural Resources Minister under Yanukovych. Um, and he, 
the, uh, they were both associated with the Party of Regions, um, which has been described can as an anti-NATO party. Can you point to it? Um, yeah, so we have the Party of Regions there. That is a Ukrainian political party, and that had the president, and earlier he was prime minister, Viktor Yanukovych, and Mikola Zlochevsky. So he founded this company, Borisma, with a guy named uh, Nikolai Lysin, and there are several people in American politics who have lobbied for and been on the board of Burisma, including Joe Biden's son Hunter was on the board. Um, John Kerry's, I think it's a son-in-law, was it stepson? H.J. Hines. Hines, H.J. Yes. Hines uh, was a board member, or maybe still is, and a guy named David J. Leiter, uh, whose wife was an advisor for Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and Leiter was an advisor for Kerry. But Leiter lobbied on behalf of Burisma uh, years ago. So there's all these people with ties to Burisma and the Party of Regions, including Manafort, Podesta, six American political families I've found out. So I don't know why we're talking about Ukraine, or sorry, Russia, and I've been f trying to focus all this stuff on Ukraine because Burisma and Joe Biden, if, you, if they look into Joe Biden, it's going to turn up just Paul Manafort's dealings in Ukraine, Tony Podesta's dealing in Ukraine, and nobody wants to talk about that because that's going to expose both parties. That's what I'm here to talk about. And how did you how did you find out about this? I mean, <laughs> in, in my notes, you're right. It says that you, my guest, Joe Kopsik, found most of this two years uh, when it was overlooked by everyone else. Why was it overlooked by everybody else, and how did you discover this? Well, it was overlooked by everyone else because they were busy uh, downplaying the credibility of the WikiLeaks. And uh, there's an email from October 8th, 2015, where Tamara Stanton Luzado at Pew Charitable Trust and a former senior aide of Hillary Clinton, she emails John Podesta and a bunch of other people uh, about a party that they're having. And you can go to the WikiLeaks, October 8th, 2015. And the thing is about, you know, I looked into who this Tamara Stan Luzado woman is, and it turns out her husband was a lobbyist for Burisma, the largest energy company in Ukraine. And, um, yeah, so in, in November 2017, that's uh, 22 months ago, I published on my blog an article called Pizza Gate Conspiracy Theory, and I wrote, Tamara Stan Luzado's second and current husband is David J. Leiter, a former lobbyist for Burisma Oil Company headquartered in the Ukraine. Tony Podesta, Paul Manafort, and Joe Biden's son, Hunter, also have ties to energy deals and other important deals in the Ukraine. I should have said Burisma specifically. Uh, but yeah, even, though, even then, almost two years ago, I had this idea that three or four American political um, families have business and political ties to, this, to Ukraine and party of regions and Burisma. And you mentioned the word uh, Pizzagate, and I see Russiagate. What are all these, uh, what, what is this? Yeah, I mean, the, the gate thing originates with Watergate and later on the, uh, what was the one with the Clintons in the 90s? I don't even remember that. Um, Whitewater. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was, yeah. Yeah, never mind. But yeah, yeah. gate has just been added on to the, to the end of a title of a lot of conspiracy theories, just to kind of a way to keep them snappy and short. Uh, Russia gate is, it refers to the theory that there was Russian and Trump collusion. I think it's turning out more, more likely that it was Russian Ukrainian collusion. You could still make the case for Russia. But the um, Pizzagate idea is the idea, well, it all goes back to Comet Ping Pong, a pizza restaurant in Washington, D.C., that a guy named Edgar Madison Welch uh, took two guns into because he believed they were torturing children in a basement. Oh, my goodness. That's pretty, that, it's, that sounds pretty uh, horrible, isn't it? And then you, you, meant, you mentioned the word Podesta because we know... John Podesta was, you know, working with Hillary Clinton, and you're really talking about Tony Podesta. That's his brother. Am I correct about this? So I don't want to, I don't want to mix the brothers up. Right. So John and Tony Podesta are brothers. Uh, they are both um, co-owners or, or whatever it is of the uh, Podesta Group, which is a, um, I think it's a lobbying organization. They have a lot of really wealthy clients, including Walmart and I think like a military contracting firm or two. And also, John Podesta is at the Center for American Progress, which is a Democratic think tank. He was a top aide to Bill Clinton and later the campaign manager of uh, Hillary Clinton. And so, um, and yeah, Tony Podesta, he, he allegedly met with Hillary Clinton to discuss Uranium One, so that's his possible ties to Uranium One. Um, but yeah, Tony Podesta is the one implicated with uh, Paul Manafort and the European Center for a Modern Ukraine, um, a think tank supposedly based in Brussels, but which reporters tried to call them up and found that no one was answering. And this uh, European Center for a Modern Ukraine was allegedly controlled by Ukraine and sympathetic to the party of regions. And Paul Manafort and uh, Tony Podesta allegedly used this think tank to influence the Democratic Party. 
So why hasn't, first of all, I, what I don't understand, when, uh, when uh, President Trump was talking to the um, president of the Ukraine and trying to get what this is all about, why was it considered the wrong thing to do by the Democratic Party? Well, one theory is that because they were mad that Trump found out that the Bidens have been doing something wrong in Ukraine. The other theory is that he's legally in the wrong because the Democrats' defense over the idea... Okay, so there's, one, there's the one thing about Trump calling the Ukrainian president to, to, to get the heat on Biden. Then there's also the accusation that Biden withheld aid or promises of U.S. aid in exchange for replacing the prosecutor uh, and they did replace that prosecutor, who was investigating his son and Burisma. So either the Democrats are just mad at Trump because he's found out Biden's crime, or they're mad at him because he's, you know, he's disagreeing with a policy decision that was made under the Obama-Biden administration uh, to withhold um, aid from Ukraine if certain conditions aren't, are, aren't met. So I would imagine that one of these conditions that Biden threw in was like, oh yeah, don't investigate my son or his company. So. I mean, they've been investigating Donald Trump for how many years? The um, Mueller, the Mueller investigation, but it was okay to investigate him for how many years? Twenty-four months, or what was the uh, actual time frame? Two, three years, and yet uh, another person's running for office. You know, why can't he be investigated? What's wrong with that? Yeah, and you had Lindsey Graham on the TV the other day saying we need to we need to have an investigation into what's going on in Ukraine. Um, if we do an investigation into what's going on in Burisma, it's going to turn up six American political families implicated, and that is going to radically change the dynamic of American power structure and who's in charge and the dynasties that we have. So yeah, there needs to be investigations across the board of people's interest in not only Russia but Ukraine specifically this company. Uh, because who controls the flow of oil in Ukraine controls who has, you know, wealth and political power there. And American politicians know that. Hmm. And who are the six families that are involved? You mentioned six families. Yeah. So um, not all these families have direct ties to Burisma. Some of them are to Burisma. Some of them are to the Party of Regions, uh, whose ecology minister, Mikola Zlochevsky, was the co-founder of Burisma. So there's that tie through there. But Paul Manafort and uh, Paul Manafort worked to westernize the Party of Regions, which is an anti-NATO uh, Ukrainian political party. And Tony Podesta might have been working with him um, through this think tank called the European Center for Modern Ukraine, presumably the one that was trying to westernize uh, the Ukrainian political party. Um, so the five, the, the six families are: you got Manafort, Podesta. And then also Hillary Clinton, because she has ties uh, to the Podestas and to the Leiter Lozado family. The Leiter Lozado family, because David J. Leiter was a lobbyist for Burisma. And also, uh, you got the Kerrys and the Bidens. So, Kerry, Biden, Lozado, Clinton, Podesta, and Manafort. Again, that's because Joe Biden's son and John Kerry's uh, son in law were board members of Burisma. So you got both the Democrats and the Republicans in, yeah. in this situation. It isn't just the Democrats, but you got a re, you got also a Republican who is um, that was Manafort, correct? Yeah. Okay. And so there's all these ties. You know, there's. I mean, it's like collusion. Now, when you say conspiracy, is it a conspiracy theory? And it, first of all, explain conspiracy theory. And is it a conspiracy theory? And is it considered collusion? Um, well, the way the government frames it, a conspiracy theory is an idea that the government committed a crime or that a politician did anything wrong ever. And obviously, th we know that happens. What I, the way I explain conspiracy theories is that the police are an example of people who have a conspiracy theory all the time. Conspiracy to commit murder is a crime. Conspiracy to commit any other crime is a crime. So invis investigators get ideas that people uh, you know, engage in conspiracies all the time. And uh, w you know, we know the government's committed crimes. You know, all the, there are all those people who went to jail under Reagan and Nixon. That happens. We know that. We have newspapers to prove that. So. Um, the, the idea about Russian Trump collusion, it's like, it's not so much of a conspiracy as it is open collusion. And in that sense, there's no collusion because it's all out in the open. There's a thing in the conspiracy researcher community that says, 
the, the, the easiest co conspiracy to get away with is one that's out in the open. Because if you tell everyone that you're screwing them over and tell everyone what you're going to do, there's no way they can accuse you of being a liar, at least. They might disagree with what you want to do, but no one will believe them if they try to say you're a liar or something. So it's very easy to get away with just high-level collusion, open collusion. And we know that because of Donald Trump's July 2016 press conference where he says, I hope if any Russians are listening, they get a hold of Hillary Clinton's 30,000 missing emails. Not that I didn't want to see those emails, but that was arguably an example of open collusion. He didn't need to you know, get Russians to find that information for him in any surreptitious way. He did it out in the open live on TV. So, but wasn't that Julian Assange? He's the one that originally said he has all these um, emails and stuff, and that he was the one that was sending them. Um, uh, I mean, that was an open. It was already open about that. He said he was going to be sending them, and he did. So it wasn't. I don't see it as collusion because it was already brought to the table that he was going to do it. Now he, the only thing that wasn't, he wasn't going to, um, he wasn't going to tell who he got a lot of these things from unless they released him. He was, he's been living in the, um, uh, British Embassy, I think, or um, not the British Embassy, the, um, the other one, the one, uh, it's Spanish. Is um, it Ecuador? Peru Ecuador, yes, the Ecuadorian embassy. Mm. That's exactly what it was. And he's trying to. He said that if he, if they release him from that and and not not to do any kind of punishment or whatever or put him in jail or prison or anything else, he will tell where he got all the. Um, it was a very easy thing to do. So instead of having to, you know, and you know, try to. Uh, you know, intimidate so many different people, if they just would have given him what he wanted, all this could have been done years ago of who gave him all the information. But nobody wanted to release him from the Ecuadorian prison. Yeah, so to give some background on that, um, Julian Assange is the founder of WikiLeaks. He's from Australia. Um, over the last 10 years, he's published uh, leaked information from the military and the NSA that he got from people like uh, Edward Snowden and Chelsea Manning. And that information turned out to be just really important in terms of, you know, peace activists, you know, anti-government surveillance activists, knowing what, you know, the government's spying on us and what crimes is committing, uh, wars around the world. So WikiLeaks has never been proven to be unreliable. Um, Julian, Julian Assange has been a hacker since he was 16, but that doesn't mean that any information here was hacked. There's this, been this whole debate here about, aside from whether WikiLeaks is reliable, it's like, how, were the, how did these emails come out? And it's like, before we get to that, it's like, which emails are you talking about? DC leaks, DCC leaks, DNC leaks, Podesta, uh, the Alephantis website, the Hillary Clinton, the Anthony Weiner. There were six, seven different sets of emails. And whether they were hacked, leaked, or cracked depends on which case you're talking about. Can, and, can you, before you go on, can you, yeah. can you tell our viewers, let's go through these three. Hacking, cracking, leaking. What is the difference? So cracking is when you, like, for example, crack a passcode or crack a password or correctly guess a password and get into someone's account. Hacking is when you subvert a computer system and, like, the word hacking is thrown around in this and really hacking has nothing to do with it. We're really talking about cracking versus leaking. And leaking is sharing information that you got through possibly illegal ways or maybe someone shared it with you. Maybe they got it illegally. Who knows? Um, I do a lot of my research based on these these leaked WikiLeaks emails. And John Podesta, for example, has never said, those aren't my emails. He just said, the Russians got to my emails. So there's all these different theories about where, how these emails were leaked or hacked or what. Like John Podesta lost his phone got, getting out of a car. His y username and password were extremely easy to guess. He and Huma Abedin and Hillary Clinton didn't leave their, they didn't guard their emails properly. That's how this information got out. And it was the police who got a hold of Hillary Clinton's emails through Huma Abedin, through Anthony Weiner in 2011. So this information, a lot of it has been out there for eight years. And that's why Trump said the word Pizzagate in 2011. That's what I think. Um, but yeah, uh, like people like Lindsey Graham will call, um, We'll call Julian Assange a traitor and say he should, be, he should be executed. It's like Julian Assange is an Australian citizen who never pledged a loyalty to, the, to America. He can't be charged with treason. So like, it's like this guy is reliable. He's publishing reliable information that lets us know more about the crimes that our government's doing with our own money to spy on us. 
And I, I trust WikiLeaks, uh, be, especially because Podesta has never said those aren't my emails and no one else has. Is either. he still leaking? Uh, is any of the stuff from Assange? I mean, that was, that was then. Is he doing anything now? We don't know if he's in the middle of all this or he is still doing, uh, you know, cracking or hacking or whatever, uh, leaking emails. Is he still doing that type of thing? Or who is doing this now? Because... Um, how are all these things getting out? Then we got. We, then we have a situation of a whistleblower. Now, um, where does where did this whistleblower come from? Did he get his information firsthand? Now they're saying the whistleblower got himself. He got it through hearsay. You know, he's not the one that got it. He just got it from somebody that told him. And if somebody that tells you, it's called hearsay. So what is actually happening on the you know on that side of the you know? Well, I, I haven't followed WikiLeaks lately. I've just gone into past uh, WikiLeaks to do research, uh, so I don't know too much but, about it. But tell a little bit about a, a whistleblowers. But yeah, I mean, whistleblowers are people who, uh, who you know, try to get the government convicted of, of crimes. Um, Obama signed a Whistleblowers Protection Act into law during his administration, and I've heard some progressives say it didn't really go very far to protect anyone. Uh, I think probably is pro uh, you know, persecution of environmental activists or something. Um, but you know, but everybody's, everybody's, it would it would be a lot yeah. less it would be a lot less controversial to have things like whistleblowers and people leaking information about the government's crimes in our society if we just had something common these days. Like, I don't know if anyone's out there has ever heard of an ombudsman's office. There used to, I mean there used to be widespread government. Uh, there's an office in the government for investigating the government, and you know you Google ombudsman's office, you can't find anything. Like, there used to be a way to actually hold the government accountable and responsible for it. You know, now for we're, now we're investigating the investigators. So now we got a whistleblower that really didn't really, you know, they call him a whistleblower, but to me a whistleblower isn't somebody that they get it firsthand, not to get it from somebody else that got it from somebody else. That, you know, it reminds me of the game, did you ever play the telephone, game? Telephone. Yeah. And by the time, you know, the original gets to the very end, it's completely turned around. It's not even the, the same question anymore. Yep. So Russia how you, turns into Ukraine or the yeah. other way around. So how do you depend now they want to impeach the president because of the whistleblower that was supposed to tell the information because he heard the telephone call now he says he didn't hear the telephone I mean it's it's like it's the whole thing is so there it, it's just you know who could believe anything that's happening anymore it seems yeah. so and it's also because like you know we have so many laws that are not really right and and like it, it's really just a question of who do you agree with policy wise when it comes down to like Biden's uh, dealings with Ukraine and Trump's dealing with Ukraine like you could say that Trump's doing something absolutely legal because he's just calling up the president of Ukraine and saying investigate this crime because yeah that's what presidents do they investigate tell each other to investigate crimes of things happening in each other's country. But then you could also say that Joe Biden did something totally legal because he was at work, he was, uh, did we did, did according to policy in, in terms of um, uh, threatening to withhold U.S. aid from Ukraine in exchange for not investigating his son. So it's, it's, we can't trust either political party because they're both just afraid to investigate each other because that investigation will just turn up dirt on the same party that's doing the investigation. And that's why we need a third party in, in politics, basically, to investigate when both party, when both major parties are doing them something wrong, or you even know, working with each well, other. Well, also, and if you start investigating the telephone call of a president makes to another country and talking to a leader, a president, or a prime minister, those the people from around the world, they're not going to trust their telephone calls. They're not going to be calling. They're not going to have that type of information anymore because, you know, if I call... Uh, say I'm a president of a, I'm a president of a, a country. I'm not going to call the president because hey, everybody's listening in on our phone call, and then whatever I say is going to be turned around. Some whistleblower is going to say I said this, I said that, and it's going to be very uncomfortable. So they're setting a real bad precedent. Yeah. Um. I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> Do you have another question? <laughs> I mean, yes, I mean, that's, that, that, that in itself is uh, pretty bad. You know, maybe you want to tell our guests, you know, our viewers, and something that, um, that you would like, you know, 
that you and a lot of your investigative reporting and how you seem to get all this information you seem to get so much information before anybody else does i wish i wish we could have gotten the story out um when i when we started doing our show even a, a year ago um yeah. or the last time we had you on the show because you had been the first one to come out with the story how do you get your information i mean you you have your you have charts you have research how do you do this before everybody else does it? Well, the people who are, um, you know, reporting on what the WikiLeaks emails say, you know, they, they were uh, summarizing it, and the people were researching Pizzagate. Um, people on websites like Reddit and Vote and Steemit and 4chan, they're archiving, you know, Instagram shots of James Alephantis' uh, Instagram and John Podesta's emails and explaining the code that people might have been using with uh, emailing with John Podesta. Um, so, you know, I latched on to the Luzado, Tamara Luzado, John Podesta email, and I realized that uh, Tony Podesta and uh, Paul Manafort have ties to them. And then I've realized other things about Ukraine, like, first of all, they had a civil war in 2014. There was a call in uh, February 2014, right after the civil war, where two, leader, uh, two, two officials, one appointed by Obama from the UN, and the other a Secretary of State official appointed by Hillary, Victoria Newland and Jeffrey Pyatt, they were on a call with each other saying F the UN, saying basically we get to decide who the new leaders of Ukraine are going to be right after this, you know, Euro Maiden protests. So that's another thing that has to do with the Ukraine, that America is potentially picking the leaders of it, a foreign country that suggests huge corruption. Uh, the Obama and Clinton officials who did that should definitely be investigated in addition to the uh, Burisma scandal. So... Wow. So how do you so you get most of this information online? Um, yeah. And, the, pe how, the people do, who believe other, WikiLeaks. But how do other people don't get it? Or why don't they? You know, how come they? I mean, we got stuck with Russia, Russia, Russia the whole time when most of it was Ukraine. Yeah. How did you figure that out when you know we had uh, we had Mueller investigation, we had all these years of investigating Russia, and yet. It was, it was, most of it was Ukraine, and you figured it out. How did, I can't figure out, and I can't no. figure out, or they couldn't figure out, but you could figure out. Yeah. I, I explain that, well, what two, I just said. <laughs> two answers, one to summarize, and two, another answer. First, to repeat, uh, the Tamara Stan Luzado email to John Podesta from October 8th, 2015, and, uh, and the other one is just the fact that, you know, it was like Paul Manafort lobbied for a foreign government. It was the political party of a foreign government. It's like, okay, 